We are live, ladies and gentlemen, people around the world. Welcome to the weekly beer and video review show with me, your host, Travel Man Dan, aka Reading Man Dan, aka Movie Man Dan. Or if you just want to call me Danny, that's fine too. We have an amazing show ahead of you. We have so much fun, delicious segments going on. We have some great beers that we're going to review, and we're going to talk about some amazing videos that are coming out on the channel. So welcome. Whether this is your first time or whether you're a weekly participant, supporter, an O25, welcome back. Welcome to the show. Like I said before, I can't wait to get this going. But if you're just hopping on and you're new to the show, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. It is the weekly beer and video review show. So we go ahead and we review two beers, and we got some good ones today. Some definitely uh, ones that have peeped out in the aisle, wanted to try for a long time, excited about trying them and letting them know what I think of them. We also are going to be talking about the videos that came out last week on my channel, and I'll be previewing the video that's coming out this week on my channel. All swirled in, a lot of fun, when we bring in the test bunny, my counterpart. He'll be joining us in a minute, and we're going to also bring in What Would You Rather. I'm going to talk about some good news that's going on. I'm going to bring back just one this day in history. We're going to close it out. What are you reading? What are you watching? What are you listening to? And a quote of the week. So super excited. Sit back, relax, and get ready for the show. Now, what do we have in here? We have Eaton Schism. He's swirling in there. Welcome to the show, Eaton all right. Pretty excited about eating here. Let me know if this is your first time, where you're watching, how you're doing, all that good stuff. And let's go ahead and without further ado, let's bring in my partner in crime, the other guy to the show. Um, ladies and gentlemen, people around the world, welcome in the test money. Yeah. What up, Nate? Yeah. All right. It's another week, Nate. I'm so excited. Welcome. How are you doing this week? Awesome. Great weekend here in Las Vegas. It's not quite as hot as it was the past few weeks, so it's not like in that 115 range, so I'm actually able to enjoy the weekend. How's California? California's great, man. I'm enjoying the new spot. It's a little bit cooler here. I'm just on the tip, uh, uh, the, the, the scent, I guess, or descent or ascent or whatever way you're going of a mountain, so I get the cool breeze, loving the new place. Everything is good, man. Do you ever get those plants taken care of in your backyard? I did. You did. What do you got them. back there? What'd you go with? I haven't replaced them yet, but I took all the dead ones out. They were all about like seven, eight foot pine trees that swirl up and they just, the heat crushed them. They were done. Yes, yeah. they did. Hey, tenacious freak. Welcome to freak. the show. Yes. Always a pleasure having you here. Hey guys, before we get started into the beers, I want to go ahead. What do you guys think of the new background? Boom. All right. Vibrant wow. green hops. You like that, Nate? It looks awesome. Little baby artichokes, or are those hops? Our eyes, our blue eyes pop with the green in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I really like that. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. Now, Nate, let's go ahead. What's up, Drunatuk? Let's go ahead and crack open the first beer. First beer I've seen a few times. We actually were going to try it once before, but we didn't get a chance to. Something happened. But uh, hey, Barrow is in the house. Welcome. Yes. What's up, Barrow? Welcome to the show. This beer is exciting because, well, I just really like the label. And that's what this show kind of is based off of, is really cool bitching ass labels. Um, there is no rhyme or reason. We want to try every single beer in the world if we can. But this particular show really brought me to, um, well, I like the way that the look was of each bottle and can. And this one is probably really cool. It's called, from the Abita Brewing Company, it is called Andy Gator. Look at that. All right, take a look cool at that. Bottle. Yeah, it's a great bottle. Look at it. It's a double bock, okay? Nate, what is a double bock? Do you even know what a double bock is? I, I don't know all the details on this. I tried to do a little bit of research, and I'll read something later from the beer book. But a Bach basically means it's a, it's a, a sipping-style German beer, which is typically a lager style that's elevated in ABV. Somewhere between 6 to 8% would be a Hell's Bach, and then a Doppelbach would be somewhere between 6 and 10. This happens to be a cross between those two, a Hell's Doppelbach. Doppelbach. So this one's 8% right in the middle there. So it's 8%. a strong drinking lager is what it is. Eight percent. Oh, awesome. Great. Thanks for that knowledge, Nate. Yes, Aquanuts is here. Aquanuts. Okay. 
Well, you guys know what happens if 20 people get in the room. Okay, uh -oh. we bust out the beer bong, but I'm gonna go ahead and up that, and I'm gonna put it right now on live, and it'll be taped forever, forever and ever and ever. If we ever get 30 people in the room, I will drink an entire glass that Aquanuts and Tenacious Freak sent me of beer. <laughs> it's yeah, much bigger than this. We need 30 for that. It. It's a, it's one massive. I don't know what they call it. I guess. Uh, well, well, how big would you say that is? I have no idea. I can't see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cindy. All right. Nihama. Junitic, welcome. Yes, Adele. Welcome to the show. What up? Guys, give Adele a big warm welcome. We have a new viewer. Yes. Adele, welcome to the show. We are going to be drinking this beer right now. The Andy Gator Double Hells Bach. Hells Double Bach. This Arbita Brewery is from Louisiana. Louisiana. So Louisiana, man. Well, I tell you what, boy. Uh, uh, Abita Springs, ahead. Louisiana. There must be some significance to that. Yeah, let's crack it open. We got the, the Trout Man Dan cracker. Can't find mine, by the way. Uh oh. All, All right, right. So yeah. it's got a good it's smell to it, actually. It smells like, yeah. It yeah, smells it's good, like right, Nate? Yeah, it smells like a lager. Oh, Aquanut says the glasses are one liter. <laughs> so please 30 people come on over all right definitely the first impression of the smell it smells like a, a really intense locker nate you know it's yeah, got it smells boozy it does it does it does smell like a bit like a whiskey boozy almost mm. all right i'm gonna guess that it's a little darker than a regular pilsner but let's take a close look and i'll give you guys a better look at it oh we're, we're spot on right i i, I actually think that they um they brew this in like oak barrels or something. There's oh, a really? reason for that boozy smell. I, I don't I don't know the actual details, but somebody well, can tell typically us. Typically, I don't like those types of beers in the oak barrels. I've had a few of them, and I, I I don't. They're not for me. All right, so take a look. Not a bad look. Not overly carbonated. Okay, very golden looking. Um, the aroma that I'm getting out of it is very yeasty. Okay, it tastes I'm like Budweiser. Yeah, it smells like a strong uh, uh, baked bread, if you will. It's it's definitely got a nice as pungent smell to it. Nothing raunchous, nothing over the top. Just got a nice pilsner smell to it. Welcome, yeah. everyone, on the show. I love to see you guys all saying hello to each other. Ginevra, yes, welcome. We have a new viewer. Welcome, Ginevra. All right, how are you? I believe you're in the South as of the moment, and this is what we are drinking. So, Nate, cheers, my man. I cheers. miss week here you go i think <laughs> oh wow it tastes like a budweiser oh wow it really does yeah it's um very lager pilsner it's smooth it's definitely really rainy, yeasty yeah the, the you know I'm getting that banana bread taste coming back. Yep. It's it's very very yeasty, like unleavened bread almost. Yeah. Um, it, it's just uh, it's got a really smooth taste to it, really clean. There wasn't a lot of carbonation going on it, so it's not a crisp bite. So you know how some beers have like a, a snap to them or a, a bite to them. Nothing with this thing. It's almost like it, it tastes like fermented yeasty apple juice. Um, not bad. Not a bad first sip. Uh, you know, Nate, what was your first impression on that? Yeah, I kind of agree with you. It, it really tastes like a Pabst or a Budweiser or some kind of macro beer that's just elevates it with a little bit more alcohol. But it's easy to drink. Um, it's not necessarily a great tasting beer, but I understand why it's called like the Germans would sip on this for an elevated alcohol level because it's pretty easy to drink. Yeah, yeah, and it's got a nice, got a nice sweetness to it. Yes, Ginevra is my friend, and she is in Kentucky. She is a professor at Louisville. That's awesome, Ginevra. Welcome to the show. This is what we're drinking. We are drinking Andy Gator from Abita Al from Abita Brewing Company. We'll get into the label when we do the scoring. But now I want to go ahead and start off the show and talk about a couple of things. And the first thing I want to bring up is well, last week's video. I don't know if you guys got a chance to check it out, but 
man, it was amazing. I was in Las Vegas, and now I've been to Vegas many times. I try to go uh, every two to three months. Now, certainly, that Nate and Cindy have a child. I want to go ahead, not really to see Nate or Cindy, but more to see the baby as much as possible. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But um, so I, I try to get there as much as possible, and I've missed out on filming this place, but we finally went and did it. We did it late at night. We, we kind of went there, and we had to get it done, and I'm talking about the Pinball Hall of Fame. If you haven't seen this video, you got to check it out. It's just awesome. one of the coolest places. Um, it's on the Strip now. It's a 25,000-square-foot building with over 100 video games, the pinball games, and some video games from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It's just the way that I was shocked because it's super clean. Um, the, the guy, the owner, Tim Arnold, is walking around, and he's fixing mushroom bumpers. He's fixing the flippers. He's fixing a lot of cool things. And you're going to see some fun stuff in there, like uh, me doing the DDR um nate and i both uh not knowing where the start button is but it was just a <laughs> <laughs> nate you were there you filmed that what'd you think of that episode did you have a good time oh i, I had a great time uh it's really an interesting uh spot be able to take you through kind of the linear timeline of um pinball machines and i was never a big pinball guy but it was really cool to be there fun to watch you uh watch you play you picked up some new friends there so it was a great episode yeah, shouts out to Rachel and the staff over there who, uh, unbeknownst to me, when I hopped into the photo booth, I did not know that girl was going to hop in with me. <laughs> there was no necking going on, but it was necking. still a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's an old school term. <laughs> I know it is. Hey, there he is. Hey, Brendan, what's up, man? Always a, a true supporter in 025 in the house. Uh, sorry if I didn't answer. I'm at work. No problem, freak. I understand. I appreciate you, you know, slacking off the job to watch this show. That's awesome. <laughs> Brendan, I'm not, I'm going to sue you for the food varieties. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But, yeah, if you get a chance, go be, check out the Pinball Hall of Fame. And like I said, um, when I go to Vegas, I get, I get a different experience than most people. Um, I get to stay with Nate and Cindy, who I absolutely love best friends and um i don't really go to the strip and do the parties anymore i don't do the nightclubs i don't do the swimming pools the only time i ever really do that is if i'm working at edc um so i'm, I'm a little bit older now so i still have a great time but one thing i found is the pinball hall of fame is right on the strip so if you want to get like two three hours just to kill some time and maybe you're recovering and you got a big day tomorrow or you know what it's probably really fun to do nate the night before you travel Right. Like before you're when you're resting and you're hung over from the Saturday night and like just go just go on Sunday when you're recovering. You want to get back out and feel like you get the most out of Vegas. Go see it. They use quarters. Check out the video. It's an awesome place. You know what else you can do when you're there? It's right across the street or pretty close across the street to the Las Vegas welcome sign. So you can do both those things. Um, knock those both out at the same time. They're right down the street from each other. Ah, OK, cool. Um Aquanut says she wants a Taco Bell in Denmark. Well, <laughs> you, Bell. I don't know if you really want that, but Taco Bell is interesting. Brendan, welcome to the show. Best pinball game ever has to be Fun, Fun House. House. Oh, I don't. Is that a Gottlieb classic? I'm not really sure of that one. Um, I really liked. Uh, I like the Star Wars. You know, next. Time, yeah, next time when I'm not filming, I'm definitely gonna go back there. Yeah. And uh, and just go when I have a little more time. What was that noise? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing over there, dude? I don't, I don't know. What that is. Are, you, are you cutting gassers? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did anybody else hear Nate? I think he just farted. I think it just, I think he just farted on TV. Yep. Oh man, well, I was like, "What the hell?" Anyway, banging on the door. Oh, I thought it was a real fart. Okay, no. All right, we'll come moving <laughs> on, guys. <laughs> this is what we're drinking. It is All right, good stuff so far. Already cracked into it and I'm running with the show. I, you know, I, it's not, it's not my favorite beer, but. I kind of like what they're going for here. I think you, you have three of these and you're good. You're yeah. good for the day. Yeah, and the thing about, thing I like about the three of these is they're they're like a 
they're pilsner flavor, but they got a sweetness to them. There's it there's some very sweet. sweet. Yeah, and I like that, but it's not like sugary sweet. It's not right. tropical sweet. It's not like citric sweet. It's like it's like multi sweet, if that makes right. sense, right? It's right. like um, you know, when uh, you have an old jar of molasses and like it, it hardens around the cap or the little screw cap. Yeah. And then somehow you get it on your finger a little bit as you're turning it. And then it's like on your thumb or whatever. And you go, mm, and you just go like that. And it's just that. It's almost like it's like a sticky rice too. There's it's, it's like a sugar you get from a grain, right? So it's clearly different than a fruit sugar, but it's there. It's really on top of the palate. Super sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Cutting the cheese that said <laughs> to his brother, I'm sure you've uh, been around a couple of those cheese cuts before. Um, all right. Cut. Oh, that was the dog. <laughs> I don't know. This kid's from Pennsylvania. He likes his sauerkraut. I do. All right, moving on. Guys, I don't know if you guys checked this out. I don't know if you noticed my shirt. It's called Trees and Seas. It is um, the organization I worked with yesterday who hired me to go and read um, a, a live audience uh, reading Mandan episode. I read Save the Ocean. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, You know, I'm not super like hippy dippy tree hugging things like this but <laughs> when you're presented actual scientific facts when you see what's going on with glaciers and global warming and stuff like that now hear me out when you see the actual science and you don't put it politically on your agenda they got a point and um you know you don't think of it now because I'll be dead but uh, my grandkids will definitely suffer from this because what's happening is when you do like a overtime map you see each country is is condensing and losing land i mean it's just the water is is um is getting really uh different the glaciers the water is like eating away at the land it's it's really kind of crazy how you don't really truly understand until you get in front of somebody that is cool about it and that teaches you and the people over at seas and trees who are now putting out documentaries like Plastic Oceans. These are really cool people that are educated in this field. They're not just telling you to kind of like get out in front of you and push their agenda and stuff like that. They'll show you factual science. And um, it was just nice to be a part of that. I think conservation of our forests and oceans should be respected by everyone. Um, I, I, when you look at one of the things they showed me, Nate, was a documentary um, it's crazy, man. When you look at, they were catching giant fish off of this coast or whatever, and they when they cut the fish open to study it, it had like chunks, size of quarters, like multiple, multiple chunks of plastic, mm. because the fish doesn't know any better, right? So the litter from, you know, a, a crab, cra you know, ba bags, all these plastic things, the fish just grabs it, thinks it's food and stuff like that. Um, and we're kind of damaging our sea life and the forest life is a whole nother thing. But it was just really nice to be around that. Like I said, I'm not a hippy dippy tree hugger guy, but anytime anyone asks me to go and perform and be part of something like that, I show up and show out and I enjoyed it. Um, the, the director is a good friend of mine, so I was happy to be a part of it and help her. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and put down in the description a link to Trees and Seas and Plastic Ocean and Conservation Comedy. If you got a time, you want to check it out, that's on you. I'm not going to push that agenda on you. But if you want to see it, if you want to be aware of something, um, it, it's really starting to make me think quite differently about the way um, I see the earth and stuff like that. Barrow says no guest today. Unfortunately, Barrow, we don't have a guest. This is it. I think me and Nate will be enough. I hope Nate. so. <laughs> uh, Nate, I'm actually um I'm already feeling the strength of this beer. How about yourself? Oh yeah. It's I'm yeah. I'm about eh, a third of the way through and I can definitely feel the booze. It's a boozy beer. There's no doubt it's about a, it. It's definitely a boozy beer. I'm starting to I feel like it. Yeah, I'm starting to get those rosy cheeks. Um, I enjoyed the pinball, said Barrow. Thank you so much for watching it. Um, you talked about MTV last time. One of my favorite was David Bowie criticized MTV for not playing videos by black artists. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. who, who remembers Yo! MTV Raps? I do. Yo! MTV Raps. I remember that. Yeah, I got to say back in the day, Nate, um, MTV probably, who do you think was the first black artist played on MTV? 
Michael Jackson, maybe? I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, probably Michael Jackson. Um, yeah, who knows? It could have been somebody like obscure, maybe maybe Lionel Richie or, or, or uh, one yeah, of my. I feel like he at the time, what, what was their first video? We did it last week, right? What was the first one? What was the date? Uh, 1981. Yeah. My favorite. I, I was, remember, was he still Jackson 5 at that point? He could have been. But you know who else is my – a lot of people don't know this. How would you know this? One of my favorite artists from the 80s is Billy Ocean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Get in my car. Do, 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 do. He just got that sound, his voice. My sister's here. Welcome, Lisa. 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 Guys, Lisa, what's up? Hello. Missed it. <laughs> okay, Calvin. Welcome to the show, Calvin. This is what we're drinking from Arbita Brewing Company, we are having the Andy Gator, okay? There's the bottle. That's what it looks like in a goblet. It's pretty strong. Liking the flavor overall. It's an intense uh, uh, Pilsner, uh, double Hell's Bach, whatever it's called. Um, I do like Grace. Double, double Bach. Double Bach. Oh. You know, you know the thing, though, about this kind of beer, Danny, is that because we're so IPA-centric here, uh -huh. you don't get a lot of this type of beer. They they. Brewers are not focusing on a Doppelbach. You know, That's a good point, so, yeah. Pretty interesting. I'd like to see more brewers kind of try and tackle this thing because there, there is a space for it. There's, there's yeah. a reason to drink this. Have two of these with a burger with your friends. You know, I, I don't know if I drink it all day long. It's too strong. But if you want to have two, three beers to call it a nightcap, this is the perfect kind of beer for that. You're, you're absolutely right, Nate. You know, a lot of people in the, in, in the United States are – going crazy over craft IPAs and now they're getting into stouts and stuff like that. But I think, I think they're missing out on something like this that, uh, you know, yes, it's super strong. And like you said, it's like something that you might drink instead of drinking liquor as a yeah. nightcap and <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of people don't like IPAs because of that ultra hoppy flavor, yeah. that really skunky flavor. Well, this doesn't really have it. This has that sweetness and maltness. So, People that are turned off by IPAs uh, are always arguing and contested by people that like IPAs saying, no, oh, they, they're good, they're strong, they mess you up, all this kind of stuff. But yet, maybe they should turn them on to this one because it's not as strong of a taste, but it does have a lot of strength in the alcohol. Well, well people complain about the macro beers all the time because those are the things that are so easily accessible. But this is an elevated version of that. So, you know, if you're complaining about it, right, you don't like that how streamlined it is and it doesn't taste like anything. This tastes like beer. Yeah. It tastes yeah. like a, a, it tastes like a lager. It will smack you in the face that I'm halfway through and I feel a pretty decent buzz from it. So <laughs> this is what people talk about all the time. Look at the color on this thing. Like yeah. That's, that's, oh. that's a legit beer. That is nice looking. Lisa says Caribbean queen. And now we're sharing the same dream. Yes, we are Lee. That's a, that's a great song. I love Billy ocean. Uh, I love uh, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Um, tiny glass, Danny, <laughs> Aquanuts. Hi, guys. Have, and gets a happy day. Yes, Lisa. You know, it's funny, Lee, that you showed up because everyone was asking, where's your sister? So I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're hanging for the show. Um, keep having fun. I want to move on to the next thing, the Olympics. I don't know if you guys seen, but uh, do you guys watch any bit of the Olympics? We talked about it a little bit last week, but – this was crazy because I watched this. Uh, a Chinese Olympic diver, Chuan Hongqian, okay, at the age of 14, is the country's youngest athlete at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. 14. Wow. 14 years old. She Jeez. scored two perfect tens to win gold medals in diving. It's unbelievable. I mean, like. My, oh, my mom sent me a text message about that, specifically about it, that she's like, it's the best diver I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how much diving she's watched, but yeah. still, it's impressive. I mean, she's she's small, right? She's 14. Sure. Um, she's got the frame of, of, of a Chinese woman, a uh, girl, young girl, right? So my thinking on this is, and this is not taking away from anything, I believe diving is measured on, you know, the twist and the jump and stuff. Right. But it's also... On the on the splash, right, dude? It's crazy when this little girl jumps and like does all this crazy stuff. But then when she goes in, it's like, it's like throwing, just, yeah, it's like throwing um, a pool ball in the water. Um, <laughs> it's not no splash at all. 
So I often wonder, does that have anything to do with her size? Is that like her, or if she was fully grown uh, as an adult, uh, say 26, or, you know, just being a larger body, does that have anything to do with it? I don't know. I don't know anything. Yeah. Right. It's got to so. be the mass of somebody going in, right? You, you can only hide the size of your body so much with how you're able to fundamentally breach the water, right? So yeah. it has to be that, – that's why jockeys, look at horse racing. You're never going to find a six foot one, 220 guy on a horse. You, you can't do it that way. Same thing as a driver. Like they're, yeah. out, they're, they're structured a certain way because that's what you need to be the best. So I would imagine at that level – that is a very big advantage for her. Absolutely. But but nonetheless, two perfect tens, amazing oh. dives. Congratulations, Chuan Hong Chen. Okay. Especially yes. from China. I like to see it. Yeah, me too. They're, 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 they're doing good. Well, I think the U.S. right now is first in medals, first in golds. Is it over? I don't know. It's, it's coming close. It's coming it's close. Be close. I feel like it's been on for a while. Yeah. Three weeks now? It's been a couple of weeks. Martin says two a uh, perfect ten. Yes, it was amazing. Martin, Martin, thank you so much again for the Jim Kelly jersey. Okay, Barrow says, "Bye, Calvin. See you next week. Bye, Calvin. I'll see you next week." Lisa, you're on after church. I go shopping. Been missing you guys. Thank you so much, Lee. No problem. What about the 13 year old skateboarder? Says Lisa. I don't. I didn't see that one. From um, where? Uh, where is she from, Lee? Probably so I, yeah, probably, I don't know. I, yeah, the, I haven't really watched much of the Olympics. Um, there's a lot of crazy different sports, like skateboarding, the like women three on, the gold in soccer, three on throw, three on three basketball. Martin says, "I believe it's how you shape your hands when you break the surface. You make this cup kind of shape against your, what kind of goes against your logic, like like something like yeah, this." Something I, like this. Yeah, I don't know. You know, Martin, I've never been much of a high diver. I'm more of a <laughs> I'm more of a can, I'm more of a cannonball guy. <laughs> All right, so, Calvin, it was great to have you here. I oh, can I be your guest one day, Danny? Borrow, I would absolutely love if you were my guest. Okay, I'm telling you right now. Go ahead, send me a private message. Tell me which Sunday you want to go. And be on, and then we'll put you on, Barrow. We'd love to have you. And with that being said, please, guys, um, football season's coming on. As I alluded to a minute ago with uh, Martin giving me the Jim Kelly jersey, it means everything to me to be watching the Buffalo Bills. So you know during football season, the beer show kind of fluctuates. And now this year that we have Nate, we also have Philadelphia Eagles diehard fan. So – I will be putting out a schedule within the next two weeks of when the show will be happening during football season. So you're going to have to hang with us throughout the fall, but we're still going to have the same fun. We're going to be bringing in more guests. We're going to be getting better, so just hang tight. But, yes, we would love to have Barrow on the show. Her name is Sky Brown. Thank you, Lisa. I don't know where she's from, but moving on, <clears throat> unfortunately, some sad news. Um, this, one is, this one is hitting a lot of people that I know very, very hard. Uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, stunt actor, actor, uh, studio uh, director, uh, Brad Allen. I don't know if you guys know that Brad Allen passed away. Brad Allen was the first foreigner to kind of go over to China and become a massive uh, success. And he was Jackie Chan's protege. He was unbelievable. Any action movie that you've seen in the last 25 years, Brad Allen has probably had his fingers on it or been involved. Um, they haven't released what happened, but a lot of my friends that I worked with in China, that I work with in uh, movies and stunt industries, were friends with Brad Allen. He was a very, very big person um, in the stunt community. He was an incredibly talented human being. Um, he could do crazy stuff. And if you've ever seen some of his older, like early, late 90s, movies. He was in there with Jackie Chan. He was the first foreigner, I believe, to be part of the Jackie Chan stunt team. So like actually be a part of the team, not just a guy that was picked up on movies and stuff. Like he trained and lived with these guys. And uh, yeah, so rest in peace. We are going to miss you. He's only 48 years old. I wanted to put that out there for um, my friends out there. Uh, I know they're in a lot of pain right now. I was talking to him, a bunch of people 
over the last two days all over the world. And it's really sad to see because I never met him personally, but someone that um, I followed after him, someone that I watched that kind of inspired me to do it. He's an Australian guy, and he was another affirmation for me to say, you know what? You can go to China and work in the movie business. Um, unfortunately, Brad Allen has passed away, so I want to put that out there. Sucks, man. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, I'm a cheers to Brad Allen. Yeah. Ah, delicious. Delicious beer. Okay. Lisa says, yes, bro. Borrow beer guest. Everyone wants to see Bobby Bowden. Bobby Bowden. Love to dark hair, Lisa. Rest in peace. Yeah. Hi, Martin. Very sad to hear that. Yeah. It's, it's very sad. Um, so, um, moving on. Guys, I want to go ahead and stick to the subject. And what since we were talking about Jackie Chan, Nate, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop you down for a minute because it's time for show and tell. Okay, show and tell. This one's gonna be fun. This one's gonna be really cool. You know, I like to bring some movie stuff from time to time. And since we we're talking about working in Asia, uh, it was my dream to go ahead and work with Jackie Chan. I went over there. I tried to fulfill my dream. It ended up happening. It was a great time. I worked on a movie called Dragon Blade uh, side by side with him. It was just an incredible uh, three months working in the desert, working in a studio called Hengdian in China. And it was just a really fun, fulfilled dream that I always have. Um, and, you know, working with Jackie Chan was unbelievable. He was a great guy, really nice. And when you meet nice people that you look up to, it really makes the whole experience even better, especially somebody that you've been watching for for about uh, 20 years and, you know, since as a little kid, and then you meet the person. But I wanted to show you guys a couple weeks ago, I had some stuff that wore on the film Sea Biscuit. So I thought since I'm moving, I dug up some stuff. And, guys, today's show and tell is something that I wore on the movie Dragon Blade. So – Without further ado, let me show you what it is that I wore on the actual movie. And these right here are my uh, Dragon Blade uh, forearm shields. Okay, it was a swords and sandals. It was a Roman soldier movie with John Cusack and Adrian Brody. And I wore these. These are the actual ones I wore in the movie. So if you watch the movie and you see me, I had a big hair. I had a big goatee. It was a lot of fun working in the desert. But these are the actual um forearm shields that I wore as my character Decimus who was a Roman soldier he was a guardian he um first I started off as John Cusick's guardian and then something happened and I ended up as one of the guardians that was fighting with Jackie Chan against the tribal uh, fighters and the bad Roman soldiers which were led by Adrian Brody but but I always um <laughs> I always remember putting these things on all day. And, and you want to talk heat. Nate was talking about that earlier. It was about 110 degrees um, in the Gobi Desert where we filmed most of it. It was in um, western China. Once again, the movie is called Dragon Blade. So if you happen to check it out, these are the actual forearm things. I'm going to wear them throughout the show. What the hell? Why not? That's my show and tell. Nate, what do you think? It's awesome, man. Plus, I remember watching that movie. It was super exciting. Um, and I remember seeing those things on the film. That's pretty cool. It's a great, it's a great thing to share. Awesome. Yeah. And, and my, me and my watched it with cousin. Pi. Yeah. Do you remember Nate when I was actually filming it? Cause I was talking to you, yeah. you know, just like every day, like, you know, and, um, it was cool, man. It was a wonderful experience. And aside from meeting Jackie Chan and working with him and, and John Cusack and Adrian Brody, like I, those are the people you know, I don't talk to them on a daily basis, but a lot of people that I met on there have become good friends of mine. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was a good experience. That's um, that's today's show and tell. <laughs> there cool. we go. I'm you ready to go. The rest of the show. Dude, Dragon Blade 2, man. Okay, the return of Da Sing Sing. What do you think? <laughs> Love it. All right. Hi, everyone, by the way. All right. TMD, the warrior. Well, um, I had a crazy permed out hair and a big beard, but uh, we'll still go out there and bang. I watched the movie Dragon Blade. It was a wonderful movie. Thank Bar you, Byron. Byron, always good, always good. All right, so 
Guys, this is what we're drinking. It's called Andy Gator. It's by Abita Al Brewing. Abita, Abita's been around for a little while. It's back since like 1986. Can you tell us a little bit about the brewery, Nate? Yeah, I, I don't know too much about it, but one thing that I do know is they, they, they've got some pretty cool um, pretty cool beers. So everything's kind of based on Louisiana, right? There's a lot of gator stuff, um, but they have a lot of interesting beers. They have basically like a year round, which the, the uh, Andy Gator falls into that category. They have seasonals. Um, they have bourbon style beers. If you go to their website, you check it out. You know, it's the, the LSU colors, the purple and the gold. So there's a lot of Louisiana kind of influence there. Um, check it out. It's a pretty cool brewery. They're all over. They, they mass distribute pretty much everywhere in the state. So pretty easy to find. I'm not sure which of the beers you can find because there's so many of them. But we were able to find this one. So this is what we got. Good beer. It's a nice little brewery out of Louisiana. Yeah. And I'm curious about a lot of these breweries that we see often today because um, sometimes, you, you you know, they're not like these mega huge breweries. They're just yeah. little tiny, like almost like restaurants that brew their own beer. So Abita, I'm wondering, is um, is it not – it's not a huge one, but it's also not a tiny one. So, um, you, you know, I, I, hopefully one day, Nate, we'll get a chance to go check it out in person. Purple beer, I'm not sure. Have you have we had purple beer from them? Uh, it's called Purple Haze. It's um, it's one of their more famous ones, and it's a, it's a raspberry lager, a little bit lower of an ABV. But you see that one pretty much everywhere. I've seen that in a lot of places. Cool. Never heard of it. Would love to give it a shot. And now let's get into everybody's favorite, guys. Well, it's my favorite. What would you rather? Oh, Nate, I got a good one for us today. Okay, so what would you rather? You can go ahead and let me know down in the comments right now. But the best thing for you to do is wait till the show's over and then go ahead and list me all five of your answers so I can comment back. It also helps us with the algorithm. So going with the first one, what would you rather? We're going to travel. I'm going to give you a ticket. You can go to one or two places. Where would you rather go? Would you rather go to Masai Mara, Kenya? Okay, the great plains of Kenya where all the cheetahs are, where all the wildlife is. It's a reserve. It's a if you want to call it a, a basic a safe haven for animals, um, it's just one of the places that a lot of people think of when they think, oh, I want to go to Africa and mm -hmm. see animals. That's where you go. Maasai Mara in Kenya. Okay, it's a giant reserve. The animals are protected, so there is no crazy hunting and stuff. You could probably see uh, rhinoceros. You can see cheetahs. You can see hyenas. It's a massive, massive area. Or would you rather go to... Marrakesh, Morocco. Okay, the 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 crazy bazaar, right? The, the the with the tents, the stuff that you saw in Indiana Jones, like just this crazy market of just alleys and alleys full of little little pop up stands, little shacks um, selling things. You're gonna see anything from circus performers to fist fights and and, and boxing matches and just the snake uh, charmers and sword swallowers. I mean, this is. When you think of like these open markets in a foreign country, mm -hmm. this is Mecca. This is the biggest one. This is the, you know, so on one side you have animals, peace, quiet, um, going out there and taking in that majestic scenery. Or on the other side, you have just people from all over the world and this crazy sightseeing aromas that you must smell in this place. I don't know. This one's tough. I love animals and I love Africa, but I also love people, and I also like being stimulated by things. Like I said, smelling stuff, seeing stuff. So for me, I'm going to go, and out of these two, I'm going to pick Marrakesh, Morocco. Nate, what do you got? Um, I guess I'm going to do Kenya, just because I'd like to see exactly that, you know, what it looks like out there in the great wide open in Africa. So for me, Kenya. Kenya, okay, cool. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Cindy says Morocco. Well, you might have a dispute within the this dispute within the family. That's okay. Jacqueline Swift. Hello. Yes. What's up, Jacqueline? Welcome to the show. We are reviewing the Andy Gator. Okay. And we are right in the thick of what would you rather? Okay. The next question. What would you rather? All right. I went to the Pinball Hall of Fame. That was last week's video, but they also had video games. 
Which mm -hmm. game would you rather play on a stand-up, right? You walk into an arcade, you walk into a convenience store, you walk into a little beach area where they have two or three games. One of those games is Miss Pac-Man. Now, it could be tabletop Miss Pac-Man or it could be stand-up Miss Pac-Man. Um, very different. Tabletop, you're kind of looking over it, you know, mm -hmm. um, thin sliced Brooklyn pizza, like you're rolling. Or Donkey Kong. Okay, Ooh. Donkey Kong is a tough one. I uh, I know there was a documentary out on the guy that busted the code right. for Donkey Kong. Um, so if you'd seen that, maybe you picked up a little bit of skills. Byron says he'd like to go to Morocco. Um, and, well, for me, I like both games just as much. They're that 80s vibe, that arcade classics. Um, if I could choose one, I would choose Miss Pac-Man. I just always had fun doing it, and I was better at it. Nate, what do you got? Donkey Kong, come on. Oh, How can it be anything other than Donkey Kong? 100%. Uh, I'm not even thinking twice about it, Donkey Kong. It's, it is tough. Yeah, it is tough. It's a tough one. All right, so going to the next one, now we're going to go to eating, okay? We always got to have fun and eating. And um, guys, uh, Swift says, hi, and Drunatic. Ginevra says, Miss Pac-Man. Ginevra, I don't know if you remember a convenience store on Kinsey and Elmwood. But they had um they, they had rush Russian attack and they had um Miss Pac Man and me and the twins and Alan Duffy's and everyone would go in there and play all the time. But going on to the next one, we're going back to Japan. We're gonna talk about eating and guys, which would you rather? Would you rather eat one of these things? And I'm gonna throw it up on the screen, guys. Okay, the first one is from Japan. And this one, would you rather eat? Ba -ba 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 -ba. No. These are called wasp crackers. Yes. Okay. As you can see, they are like a thin wafered cracker. Oh, no. And inside of those things are wasps. Okay. So you're crunching through them. They're not potato chips. Those are wasps. Okay. Those things right there are, well, it's been said that some of those things have a bit of a sting if you get them. Okay, if you bite into them, they have a bit of a crunch and that wafer kind of cookie flavor. And instead of it being chocolate chip, you bite into wasps. But the stinger is there. So it could hit your tongue, it could hit your cheek, it could hit the roof of your mouth. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's a real thing. That's called wasp crackers. Or would you rather eat the old tuna eyes? Oh, oh man. <laughs> Look at those guys. Holy cow. Dude, those now, are huge. Eat it or not is still a segment that we're going to be bringing back from time to time. But look at the size of those tuna eggs. I mean, you what? Where the hell do you start? Like, look, there's meat on those eyes around the edge, and then you get to that black part, and then you got this this white gelatin thing. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> that 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 just has a little bit of everything going on. Let's take one more look at that. that it's awesome, dude. Which one? What are you doing? I, I mean, you you might break into look at the white part of these eyes, and and do you go ahead and you break that open and like, like pus comes out or, yeah. or fluid? I mean, I don't know. That's that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Jennifer remembers the game. That's awesome. Popeye's Nuggets. That's awesome. Um, Marie just got hungry for tuna eye. Well. Filipinos are uh, been known to eat whatever. Okay, <laughs> what was that? Who? What was that? Says Aquanuts. <laughs> Aquanuts. Aquanuts. I'll bring it back, guys. We have the wasp cracker, <laughs> All right. or the tuna eyes. The best is Aquanuts. That okay? That is easy. Okay, Lisa says Morocco, Miss Pac-Man. Why wasps? A bit of a sting, disgusting tuna eyes. Why, oh, why? I'm going to have to go with probably after I thought about this over and over again, I'm going with the wasp cracker. I'm not getting into those eyes. I've eaten fish eyes, but just not that size. There's literally meat slabs hanging off them eyes. Nate, what do you got? This is a tough one for me because I'm, in, I'm intrigued by both. I want to eat both. But if I had, if, if I was in Tokyo and there was like a wasp cracker store over here, and then there was a guy that could perfectly <laughs> give me what's supposed to come out of that eyeball, I'm going with the eye eyeball guy. I want to try whatever that is. It looks good to me. I'm sure there's probably some kind of nugget in there that is phenomenal. Tuna eye all day long. Oh, 
But I, I, remember, I, I feel like I've already done that. That's nothing. I've eaten fish eyes before. They get really hard right at the eyeball part. There's like a soft. Depends like, on how they're made. You know. Like you should be eating that raw. Yeah, I have. I mean, it's oh, just, okay. yeah, it's, it's like it, you get through the slimy, oozy part, and then all of a sudden it, you, you bite into it. It's almost like a tiny little, like, um, cartilage. Yeah, like almost like a marble, too. Okay. Lisa says, ugh. And how about nuggets? No, thanks. Well, anyway, you have your choice. That would That's what would you rather for those three. Now, number four would be, and we've talked about this before, but we now will elaborate on a little bit more. Which would you rather be? Would you rather go the furthest that anybody's ever gone into space? I mean, they shoot you out there. You're out there, man. You're gone. It's, it's the back. furthest. What's it? You coming back? Yeah, you're you're always coming back, okay? <laughs> I gotta, you know, you're always coming back. You're, you're not coming back. You're, you're not gonna. I'm, I would never put anybody to choose that you might die or whatever. But you're out there. Your mind's gonna be screwed up, and you're you're you're. But you're out there. The furthest that anybody's ever been. Maybe you get shot out to Mars. I don't know how far anybody's ever been. Um, but you're out there, alone, months, whatever. Or would you rather, okay, uh, Cindy says eyes are very fishy, gross. Have trolling. Welcome to the show. Yes. Oh, my God. You got to get Nate for that test. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do, Nate. We might be going to Japan one day. Or would you rather go the deepest anybody's ever gone into the ocean? Okay. Now, the ocean's creepy, man, because yeah, it is. the pressure of the ocean, like space, you're out there, right? And there is pressure, but the ocean, like, and then there's shit living in the ocean. Yeah, you're so. alone in, in space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you're not, you know. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that might just be fine with that, but um, but <laughs> but in the ocean, there's things out there. I don't know. For me, the ocean's scary as hell, just as much as space. But I love space, so I'm going with space. Shoot me up. Hey, what do you got? Yeah, it's a tough one too. The thing that scares me the most about the ocean is that that weird thing that that grow, lives down there, and it's got the little bulb in front of it. You know That's the angler, <laughs> the, the angler fish. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that guy. Whatever this thing is, he's got that thing over there. So yeah, send me out to space. I don't okay. want to do anything with those creatures in the in the deep. Brennan says going to space. All right, have trolling. Welcome to the show. We are pumped up to say, "Damn, brother, that's a freaky one," and a <laughs> and a big neither. Lee, you got to answer one. All right, I'm going on with the next one. All right, the next one is always the the gross one, the hurt uh -oh. one, the one that's this one's not too gross because we already did the tuna eye. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you rather? Every single day, you get a sliver in your foot or your hand <laughs> like a good one not like like you are running on the the dock at the summer camp and that sliver just goes into your foot or your hand i mean it hurts every single day they pull it out and then you know you might go hand foot every other day hand foot hand foot hand foot but you get a sliver every day for a year okay okay or would you rather have a, a strong, I mean, not no wimpy, like little one on your lip. Like when you really bite into your cheek every, <laughs> every single day. <laughs> Those hurt. That Those hurt. hurt. Especially <sighs> the, the first one doesn't hurt. It, it bothers you. But because it, you bit into your cheek one time, you always bite into it like a second time. The second and third ones always hurt, man. So what would you what would you rather a sliver or biting your cheek? That one's really tough. Um, I gotta go with sliver because biting your cheek, you still have to eat. It hurts like hell. <laughs> they pop one of those eyes in right now. It says aqua nuts. Um, how do you know you'd be alone in space? That's a good yeah, it's a guess. You don't know. I mean, Bezos is out there, so that's a problem. But other um, than that, there's there's maybe maybe no aliens. If he's still out there. You did a pretty good job because my Amazon's still getting to me, no problem. But anyway, um, I'm going. I'm going with the the slivers, I guess. Ooh. Nate, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I don't like either option. Um, 
I, I guess sliver as well. I, I don't want to keep biting on the tender cheek. Every yeah. time I eat, you know, like that. I, I think I'd rather have like hinder my ability to walk. <laughs> or hands. Or, yeah, or, or my hands. So, yeah, sliver. And you can pick where you want it. Like, you, are, you know, it's a, well, today's uh, May 14th, and I think I'll take a sliver in the cuticle. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I mean, if you can right do that, then it's easy. You just get one in, like, your butt cheek, you know? No, feet and hands because it's, it's – That's it. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the tuna wasn't the game. Uh, I'm going to space with the UFO. It says, Truna take. I bet you are. Free, I'm Mauro. Visit. Free. Free. My absolute, on this show, it's free. Everything's <laughs> free. <laughs> I might choose the space, deep sea, suffocating, only think by oh, – yeah. I'm with you, Cindy. Yeah, I, that, there, I, I feel there's more claustrophobia underwater than there is out in the open space. One of my favorite movies is The Abyss. Just watch it. You'll be freaked out. Both of them, well, that sounds terrible. I'd have to go with Cheeks. Says, Brendan, no one can hear you scream in space so peaceful. <laughs> Says, ah! got to run, boys. Going to Raiders practice today. Wow. Oh, oh, this guy, AFC. This guy, guy. yeah. Dude, I, 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 I know Raiders fan, dude. He's an Eagles fan. I'm a Bills fan. Yeah, not interested. Um, Yeah, Q, thank you for showing up, though. Yeah, see ya. You. See ya, Brennan. A couple of goodbyes for dude. The last two would be rather are non-applicable to my sister. It doesn't matter. If you want to go ahead and answer, please let us know after the show. Nate, this is really good. Let's go ahead and swig it down Finish and give it a score. Ah. All right. I'll tell you what. Warm, it's not great. Okay. Like sitting down here at the bottom, that didn't taste great. I'm not going to lie. Jacqueline, The Abyss is one of my favorite movies. Man. It really is. It's a, it's it's one of the movies that, you know, whenever I kind of know you guys, I'll let you know anyway. I, you know, it might shed a tear from time to time. It's it's just really good. I just really like that movie. Um, Who directed that? Um, that was um, which we'll call it. Was that the dude that did uh, what? Uh, Alien, Cameron, uh, Titanic. Cam James Cameron. Uh, yeah, he did the Abyss, right? I believe so. I believe so. Hey, Siri. Can anybody check for us? Who, who the directed movie? the movie The Abyss? I mean, like that, huh? Welcome to 2021. Yeah, James Cameron. Okay. Right. I had to make sure. Anyway, guys, we're going on with the Andy Gator, right? This is the Andy Gator from Abita Al. Okay, let's pull out the scorecard and let's get ripping on this. All right. <laughs> Wait, I might have just seen the best comment <laughs> coming from Rocco Cordola. Okay, he says, I'm going to space because of space balls. Damn right. You're Rock right. Rocco wins the day. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, really good beer. I like the taste of it. Because what Nate kind of alluded to earlier, it's one of those things where, you know, everyone here in the United States is really high on the IPAs. But I think they really need to get on these double box because they're a little bit different taste. They're not so hoppy. And I really like the sweet multi flavor that these ones bring. And they pack a punch at just this little regular bottle. This is 8% alcohol. So that's like drinking three beers, three Coors Lights, or three uh, any of your macro beers. Wallops a punch with still keeping that taste. Sometimes you run into these other beers that are overly powered. And like I said, I don't like the taste of whiskey oak barrel with my beer. The Double Bock and the Andy Gator I thought was a great tasting beer. And I'm going to give it a score of a 4.0. Nate? Yeah, I'm going to do a 3.5 for this, but it, basically for the same reason. The fact that they're trying to take uh, this style of beer, elevate it, give us something that's drinkable with a little bit of an extra kick with the ABV. It's, it is, there is a bit of crispness there. It is funky. It's got a bit of a dark fruit, dark kind of like um, peach kind of flavor almost at the end, but I really like it. 3.5. I would drink it again. And uh, it's an elevated lager, Pilsner type. So I like it. Yeah, I really hope that um, breweries in the United States or, you know, things that we have access to really start getting into this. I think this is a special flavor. I really like the way this beer tastes, and that's why I gave it the score. Price, okay? Nate, what are we working with the price? 
This was two dollars and forty nine cents, which is typical for uh, total wine because of the alcohol volume. It's kind of going with that. Yeah, you go you two fifty, okay, with tax deposit that kind of thing. You're looking at two sixty five. Not a bad price because, like I said, you're getting basically the alcohol content. But when the alcohol content is strong and it tastes this good, I think that's a well invested price. Um, if you buy it by a six pack, it's going to be cheaper. If you can get through the six pack. You're a damn good drinker. I will say that because already I feel the strength of this one. I think you need about three of these, and you're good. If you have two before you, you know, have to come home from work, take a hot shower, you're ready for bed. It's got a nice subtle feel to it. And for that price, I like it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3.5. Nate? Same, same for me, 3.5. I'm curious what this beer would be in the Louisiana region, what, they, what, what it costs there. Obviously, we're getting some kind of distribution charge here in tax so for me 3.5 i think it's fair for a beer that's not that complex i would probably want to see it fifth lower if i'm being picky 3.5 yeah if it was 50 cents lower it would, it would be a knockout yeah all right let's go to design absolutely love it love the design i love the color scheme i love that the alligator it's got a very comic book look to it okay it's got um let's take a look let me get my face out of this Get this in the focus. There we go. It's got a comic book look to it. It's got a crown on top of its head. It is looking like a happy gator ready to eat our faces off. Um, it tells you right in the bottom corner right here what the alcohol percentage is. So that's cool. 8% alcohol by volume. Just the overall really cool look to it. I like this kind of, it almost looks like watercolor. But uh, really neat kind of label, brown bottle. I'm digging it. It's got Arbita imprinted in the glass. If you can take a look at that, not bad at all. I'm going to go ahead and give it a score of a 4.0, Nate. Uh, yeah, it's the same for me. Um, first of all, I get the guest points for having a, a brown bottle not and not screwing around with something clear and green. Um, I like that they got a little story down here. Uh, it's obviously got the alligator, which is really cool. Um, it is cartoony. I like it. It's not my favorite, but it's cool. It's different. It's interesting. 4.0. Yeah, it's different. It's cool. And this is the bitch and ass label show. I think that's a bitch and ass label. Yeah. All right, accessibility. To be honest with you, Abita is picking up the slack. Yeah. They're, 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 they're getting out there. You're starting to see them more and more. Um, they're becoming <clears throat> more of a presence around the United States. I don't know how they're viewed around the world. I'm sure that this beer, you probably can't find it a lot of places in the world. Maybe major, major cities like Paris, Rome, you might be able to find it in some kind of weird, obscure shop. But for the most part, I don't think you can find it. But I do think you can find it in a lot of places in the United States. Um, big cities like Miami, Houston, Chicago, um, LA, Las Vegas. I don't know. I, I'm going to give it... I'm going to get right right about 2.5, okay? Accessibility is not very good, uh, but it's hard to give this beer a, a real low score because we were able to find it in a place like Las Vegas and it's brewed in Louisiana. Nate, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to go a, a little bit better than that at 3.5 because I do think they're accessible. They, they, they've brewed – they're now doing 125,000 barrels a year, which puts them in that middle to – higher level distributor of, of, of micro brew, brews in America. So it's not the top, but it's kind of getting there. So for me, it'd be 3.5. Cool. All right. All right. And the TMD X factor, guys, I really enjoyed this beer so much that I'm actually going to go looking for it again. I, I think that having a couple of these beers in your repertoire for people that want to try them is always fun for people that say, you know, because now that I've become, you know, more of a beer connoisseur, okay, I don't want to say a Cicerone, but I'll say a connoisseur. People ask me all the time, you do a beer show, which is a good beer? Which beer should I try? I would recommend this beer. I think that a lot of people should try this beer. One, it's it's got a great taste. Two, it's strong. Three, it's probably something that they've never tried before. Most people that I run into um, that don't know about beers, they're pretty much your standard macros, your Coronas, your Heinekens. Um, they, they maybe have tried the Peroni. Like that's the new biggest thing or whatever, an Italian beer. But I would have these 
Andy Gators on hand and say, try this. This is this is a double Hellsbach. This thing is cr- incredible. And I think for having that, matter of fact, I think because I want to go ahead and get more for the house and just have on board, I think that adds into the TMD factor. And I'm going to go ahead and give this beer a 4.5. Nate, what do you got? So I'm going to do a 3.5. Um, I like a lot of things about this beer. I really like the bottle. I like the fact that they're trying to tackle – a different style of beer for the American palate. It's not an IPA. It's something a little bit different. Um, But it's also kind of just middle of the road for me, even though it's doing all those things. Um, I would like to see other brewers kind of tackle the same thing. So from that perspective, I like that they're kind of pioneers there because you just don't see a lot of it. So 3.5 for me, I really do like it, which a 3.5 is above average, but I don't think it's some crazy, amazing beer. I just think it's a good one. And it's yeah. an option that we have that's a, a doppel a doppel buck. Great. Love it, Nate. All right. So my score came out to be a more than the average. I think it was a great beer. Overall, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get some more. I think if you see this one, if you see Andy Gator, if you see our beta in the store at the Bevmo or at the Total Wine, get it, try it out. Let me know down in the comments below later what you thought of it. But for me, I gave it a score of an 18.5. A great score, and um, you know, I thought it was a great beer. I, I really liked everything about it, and I would recommend that you give it a shot. Really good beer, Nate. What did you give it? So recently, Danny, we've been kind of similar in our scores. I got an 18 on this overall. Again, I like the beer; it's different. Um, but the 18 score basically confirms what I thought, which is what exception. Nice, oh, it's a good beer. Yeah. Try it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good beer. It's a. It's um, it's something that, like I said, this is the type of beer that nobody's heard of. This is the yeah. type of beer that that nobody, one because it's called Andy Gator, strange name, you know, like what well, what is that? You know, that you're 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 pulling. Two, it's coming from a style of beer that a lot of people have no idea what it is. Most people know what Pilsner. Um, what uh, malt ale and malt beer and what uh, IPAs are. That's pretty much it. That's the end of the lager maybe too. Um, but that's it. So really good beer. Um, that's going to bring us to the second half of the show, guys. And I'm going to go ahead. Nate, are you excited for the second half? Are you having a good time? How do you feel? This is a strong beer. Do you feel You feel good? Uh, I, yeah, I feel great. I'm, ex- I'm actually really excited about this second one because it's a little bit different. I, I don't think I've ever had this style of beer before, so I'm really curious to see how it tastes. What style of beer is it? It's a strawberry IPA. Um, so I don't, I've never had one. Of course, fruity IPAs are a thing. Typically, it's going to be a grapefruit or a blood orange or an orange or something similar, right? But this being strawberry, I'm very, I'm very curious to see how it tastes. Yeah, and I don't know if you've noticed, but Aquanuts and Drunatic have a little discussion going on about alien life forms. <laughs> I know, I've, I've been seeing it, yeah. <laughs> so please, okay, Aquanuts. Speaking Drunatic, of the moon. Stay uh, stay with us. Um, you know, if you do see the aliens, please pick up me and Nate and uh, swing by and get Rocco and bring us up to the spaceship. <laughs> we want to go and have a beer. But it is time for the second beer of the show. This beer is going to be a fun one because it is supposed to be brewed with real strawberries. And a lot of the IPAs that you see nowadays are very citricky. They're very um, uh, lemony flavor, grapefruits. Yeah, they don't really carry that strawberry flavor with them. But really another bitchin' ass label. It's from the 21st Amendment Brewery, which does you know what the 21st Amendment is, Nate? That's when they repealed Prohibition. Oh, man. Good for you. Hell yeah. All right. So this one is from that brewery. Nate's going to tell us about the brewery in a minute. But, guys, we're going to be trying out this one. It is called Moon Boots. Look at All that right. can. Look at that. Look at those alien babes. Dude, right? We're talking about aliens. This is right on. What a segue. Why? Get me in focus. Come on, D. All right. There we go. Look at those babes, Nate. Look at them. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. and who's who's the 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 is it Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy? That's kind of that color. Uh Gamora is yeah. I think I don't like think green, that's mint green or blue or something. Yeah, but I don't think that's how you pronounce the name. But um, what is the name? Uh, it's I forget. So you might be right, but yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, it's the last one I saw, so I don't know. Look, I mean, I, I, I'm all, I'm all for it. Looks like it's got a little booty action. I'm in booty. it. In the little booty. So let's go ahead and crack it open, Nate. Let's see if we can smell strawberry fields. Oh yeah, you can That's smell it right off the bat, dude. Right off the bat, strawberry. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, oh, I like that. that. Smells really nice. Yeah. So, so my question before we pour is: this going to be like a red flavored beer, or what's it going to be? So, can can I give you a description? We can see if, if if it pairs up with that description. Sure. So, this is quoted as the strawberry IPA having aromatic hops with refreshing strawberry. So, what I'm guessing is you're going to smell. Some of those hops, which I don't really smell them. It doesn't smell piney. It doesn't smell citrusy. It's almost strawberry forward. I I can smell a little bit pine. I get, yeah, I guess. It's, there's something there. All right, let's take a look. Well, let's pour it out, and I'll tell you Ooh, what I think of it. Not pink. Okay, not pink at all. Almost right off the bat, Older. it's looking a little bit like a hazy. It is a little hazy. Very hazy. Now that I pour it in there. A um, little cloudy. Do I see a b bits of unfilteredness going on? Yep. Yeah, I do. There's I see a little. There's definitely a nice carbonation in there. And yeah, the look at this. Really nice. The smell on this beer is exceptional. Look at that, Nate. Look at all those bubbles stuck to there. Hell yeah. Okay. That looks awesome. It's beautiful. It's a really okay. nice pour on this beer. It's got a really nice white frothy head that's holding. Yeah. Okay, so you're drinking beer in space. Have trolling acts. What's this on your arm? So let's go ahead. Have trolling. You made a hop down a little bit later. These right here are my armor when I was in a movie with Jackie Chan, John Cusack, and Adrian Brody. This was part of the show and tell that I was talking about earlier. These are from the movie. Um, as I'm unpacking my house, um, each time I, I'm on a movie or a television show, I usually uh, take a little memento. This was the memento I took. If you haven't seen the movie Dragon Blade, check it out. Um, I am uh, Decimus. I'm the one of the uh, generals that helps out John Cusack and joins Jackie's team. But this was part of my costume, and I nixed it, and here it is. So that is where these are from. Oh, man, you are going to another dimension, says my sister. Um, let's go ahead and give it a sweat sip. Dude, this the smell is just really good. You know, the, the smell, I can't figure out what it is, Danny. Maybe you can. It, it smells like, you know, obviously the sense of smell is, is most connected to nostalgia and to our past, right? Something yeah. there that I smell from being a kid. I can't figure out what it is, though. Yeah, I do, too. I don't know. It might be like like, strawberry candy or I was going to say cheap, fish. Cheap, can, cheap candy. That's what yeah. I smell, like cheap candy. <laughs> Cindy says, Al, <laughs> they were under 500. Wow, right that's, that's different, man. That's a different beer. Yeah, I have Trollin. Check it out. It's called Dragon Blade, Tian Jong, Shong Shi, um, Jackie Chan, John Cusack, Adrian Brody. Uh, no Trollin. It's just yeah. recently found out that UFO looks like that. We still got the UF. That's so cool. Yes, Jacqueline, you like these? These are pretty cool. Uh, it's a great movie. Thank you. It is a Chinese movie. So if you're not used to it, it's Chinese and English. Um, but yeah, check it out. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a dream come true. Ooh. This beer is good. Nate, tell us a little bit about this beer in the brewery. Yeah, so it comes from 21st Amendment Brewery, which as we talked before, that is the amendment that repealed prohibition. So obviously a big time in American history where alcohol was illegal for several years. And then uh, the 21st Amendment got rid of that. So thankfully, that's why we're able to taste these beers today. Um, but 21st Amendment Brewery, you know, they're surprisingly bigger than what I expected. Um, they're based out of San Francisco. They opened up in about 2000 um, in South Park District of San Francisco. They've got seasonal beers. They got year round beers. They try funky stuff, which I'm really I, I'm very interested in. They have one that's called um, Heller High Watermelon, which I think is pretty popular as a as a seasoned beer. It's a wheat beer um, that they have with watermelon in it. So they're just, they got some interesting beers and they are distributed everywhere across the country. They got a really cool team. Their, their whole ideology is based on uh, creating handcrafted beers, uh, but they're able to distribute those at a high level. So I give them credit for that. Um, like I said, year round beers, seasonal beers, and they've got a really nice line of seltzers too, if you like that. So 21st Amendment, pretty cool brewery. I'd like to try some more of their stuff. 
pretty interesting. Check out their website. Great. Well, thank you, Nate. I appreciate that. Greg Z is in the house. Welcome, Greg Z. Guys, I'm so excited because this is always a special moment for me when I have the original three people in the room at the same time, Tenacious Feek, Barrow, and Greg Z. Guys, I always take time to say thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me. You were the first ones watching me um, about 100 shows ago when I first started this and was just drinking beers and talking shit. Uh, thanks for being here. Good to see you here. Barrow says cool label. It is a cool label. I, I, this is one of the things um, that I based the show off. One of the things we'll get into in a minute is what I like about this label exactly. Um, it's very punk rock looking. It's, it just, cool. it's just cool. I just like it. So, um, don't know where to see Dragon Blade at this time. Uh, you can probably rent it. Yeah, YouTube, Hulu. I don't know. Um, let's see. Cousin Zach, brother Dan is drinking a lot already. <laughs> Wait, where's Cousin Zach? Anyway, all right. Do, do you feel? Do you do you smell the hops in there, Danny? I yeah, a little bit. Not like a typical IPA one. But it, it doesn't yeah. have that super piney citrus cascade hops smell that you would think you would get from an IPA. No, because now when I first put it up here and I smell it, I do smell a lot of hops, actually. Do you? But, yeah, but as I'm halfway through the sniff, I can start to smell the nodes of the strawberry coming through. So it yeah. takes off that, that harsh, um, really bitter uh, smell and taste that most people don't like with an IPA. I like it. I prefer it. I, I, I like a strong, like, you know, gas mouth. It's bitter. Like, you, know, like, it, you know, it's it's different. It, it dances on your palate a little bit. But this is, for an IPA, it is not that. It's way more refreshing. I agree with the description. It's way more refreshing, much lighter on the tongue, but it still has some bitterness to kind of counterbalance the sweetness. Yeah, it's to me, it reminds me of, like, I don't know. You, it's like a summer beer where you come into a restaurant. Maybe you went out like sightseeing or something like that. And you sit down, you're on the patio, you're looking at the lake or you're looking at the mountains or the forest. You got families. It's like a, a nice family place. And you order a beer. That might be something that you want to order because it gives you that um, fragrant flavor of an IPA without that rank taste that a lot of people like. And it also blends in a nice summer strawberry taste. Really good. Oh, yeah. Enjoying the moon boots. Yeah. And, um, you know, San Francisco really puts out a lot of good beers, and I really enjoy this one. Maybe I'll try to get up there by the end of the year. Yeah, I think if this was in a cold pint glass on a, you know, al fresco style overlooking a pier or something, like you can whack down three or four of these real quick. Yeah, yeah, very good. All right, guys, moving on. I'm going to talk about something about that is very good as well is next week's video. If you, if, if you like the nugget video, Jordan Tick, you're going to love this one. It's one of my favorite foods, um, and it is donuts. I visit this place called Pink -a Box Donuts. It's in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's one of the cool donut shops that, like, do a lot of creative donuts. They bring in a lot of fun, different stuff. They always have um, different ways to decorate the donuts, different flavors, different tastes. They got a couple of trademark donuts, like the poo emoji or little pinky, and um, – and you got to see this video because me and Nate uh, was my Nate was my cameraman. We shot it on Fourth of July. It was a lot of fun. It was um, almost too sweet, but uh, I love donuts. So this is the type of donut spot I like. They still had that old fashioned donut style to them. A lot of places I do like the new style donuts. Don't get me wrong. I love I, you know any type of donut I usually like. And the new style donuts are very different than the old traditional donuts I grew up with eating at D&D, &D, Dunkin' Donuts. But this one still carries on that tradition. You got to see all the fun creative donuts that they did for the 4th of July holiday. You got to see the fun coffee drinks that we had. You just got to see this video. If you get a chance, it comes out this Friday for the Food Friday. It's called Pink Box Donuts. Pink Box Donuts. It's kind of a, an ode to the typical pink box donuts that was served up back in the 80s when you just got a box of pink donuts. So they kind of you know took that, restylized their boxes, but their donuts themselves are incredible. And one thing I like to say about pink boxes, 
what 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 pleasant people what great um what a great oh, yeah. experience you know nate you were there you, you weren't they like so happy to have us come there and make a video and be yeah. there and do it and like it doesn't happen all the time some people you know i've been thrown out of long john silvers and you know like and that was one of my favorite places ever but pink box was great love their staff Check out the video, Nate. You filmed it. Do you have anything to allude to that video? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a, it was a great place to go film an episode because, like you said, they were engaging, and the, you know it's not easy going into a place with a camera. You know, some people are on edge. Some people embrace it. They completely embraced it. Gave us ideas of like that wacky coffee that they had that we spilled all over the place. Sorry for the spoiler <laughs> alert, but no. they, were, they were involved in it. You know, it was it was fun. It was exciting. So I would definitely. Recommend trying the donuts for sure and definitely check out the video. Aqua nuts. That's funny that you said that. I like the old style because my grandma used to make it. My I aunt Louise would make me and my brother's donuts. And now that I have my own place with a better kitchen and a more space and stuff, I'm getting a table. It's one of the things that literally is on my vision board is to start developing better donuts right here in the kitchen. And I will be um, experimenting and trying to make my own donuts. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool that uh, – that your grandma used to make them. Miss Jens and Carl. Yeah, Carl and Jens have been out. You know, I understand it's summertime. Look, this is um, this is a revolving thing. That's why those of you that do show up every week, every time at this at this time, I can't tell you how much that means to me, to us, to, to Nate. So like that is like an extraordinary thing that you know it doesn't. It's not that I, you know, you don't need money. You don't need anything. Just knowing I have that support, I feel super rich and I can't say thanks enough um, for allowing me and Nate, as I speak for him, to be able to entertain you guys each and every week while we talk about beers. Yeah, we talk about other crazy stuff. We just like people and we like to be here. So thank you so much for giving us this platform to be on. And those of you that can show up when you show up, awesome. Great too. Um, thank you for for eating things that we can taste that sound illegal. Thank you. Hey, Filio, should start making your own pretzels at home. Ooh, Ooh that's a good that's idea. A idea. <clears throat> um, I, you know, pretzels, yes. I think pretzels are a huge, how do I say this? Nate, making the pretzel is, is very important, but what's most important is some type of cheese. Has it ever oh, been... Oh. Has it ever been invented? Cheesy, cheesy mustard. Well, I, I'm sure Auntie Anne's has something similar. Like it's a mustard, but it's cheesy, or it's a cheese, but it's mustardy. Yeah. Well, what about like uh, you know, like the melted cheese that you would put a, a pretzel in? You can do a beer, cheese, whatever kind of combination thing. Make it a little bit tangy, sour. Beer cheese. Yo, beer cheese soup. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Chef what, Welsh rare bit. Beer cheese soup. All right, moving on, guys. So if you get a chance, check out this week's Food Friday. It is from Pink Box Donuts. You're gonna absolutely love it. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite people just showed up. Yes, like Wilson. Yes. All right, sitting here with the Bruna. Oh, Wilson, welcome. What a yeah from Scotland. I what I reckon you. How is the Glasgow? Wilson is my good friend from Scotland. Welcome, Wilson. All right. I'm so happy that you're here. I miss you, man. You're one of my favorite people. And I met through my travels. What are I gonna I reckon you're sitting there with a brew house, huh? And have yourself a brood hug. <laughs> Sorry, get all worked up, mate. Help me out, dude. Nick, dude I, don't, I don't know what you're doing. I didn't realize we were we we're dropping uh impressions. You see those Japanese rain bagels. You should do that with donuts. <laughs> What is a Japanese rain bagel? I don't know rain what that bagel. is. Wilson, welcome. Beer, Beer cheese. cheese soup. Wilson, you weren't here for this, but I'm going to bring it back because I know you like exotic foods. Which would you rather, Wilson? Would you rather eat the wasp cakes? <laughs> okay. Or the tuna eyes. Tuna eye. No brainer. Tuna <laughs> eye. Tuna All eye. Day. Now, Follow Wilson. Tuna eye. Wilson is from Scotland. He is in Scotland. He is no stranger to haggis. You know, like a haggis. All right. So, well, <clears throat> I, I, like I said, accents are always hard for me. I always have to warm up. But welcome to the show. 
<laughs> I like I like listening to it. Uh, oh, it's a shit show. Second beer in. <laughs> we're, we're, we're drinking Ooh. this one. Moon boots. Hey, so it does look like a hazy, doesn't it? It does. Okay. It started off a lot of carbonated uh, bubbles. It almost uh, looks like lemonade. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's got a cloudy look to it. I, you know, to be honest with you, I kind of like it. I, I'm not, I'm not, I got nothing bad to say about it. It's, um, it, it's pretty good. So, uh, what is Ralph R O F L? Right on the floor. <laughs> right on the floor laughing. <laughs> is that what it means? Yeah, oh, that's so. awesome. Those eyes are insane. Show. <laughs> 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 Lisa, by, by, by the way, you putting the picture up on the screen is so much better. Better than, yeah, it's better, so right? So much better, man. So little by better. little, bro. You know, I figured out things. I, uh, I figured out, and we're going to be going with that. Um, Wilson said, I was thrown out by the beer juice seeds, but it's good to see the wasps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, yeah, Wilson's great, man. Um, okay, so moving on, guys. This day in history. <clears throat> On this day in history, on August 8th, 1974, President Richard M. Nixon announces his intention to become the first president in American history to resign. With impeachment proceeding underway against him for the inconvenient stuff that went on at Watergate, President Nixon was finally bound to pressure from the public and Congress to leave the White House. Wow. So on this actual day... Nixon said, I'm out. He had enough, right? And it's so crazy because if we look back to 1974 where, where President Nixon was like, I'm out, right? And, and, you know, he saw the scandal, whatever, as opposed to the current day. And I'm not going to get too political, but there's been a lot of uh, impeachment talk, things like this. And, then, you know, you know the, the, whether you like them or you hate them, I don't know. I don't care. But President Trump stood by what he believed or what he said was true and didn't walk out. He didn't say it. Nixon was caught red-handed, so he had a peace out. But on this day in history, Richard Nixon becomes the first United States president to resign. Nate, what do you think? You like a little politics here and there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about Watergate, but, you know, I I, I don't know. I'm curious where the, what that story would be like today. Exactly. That's my point. Like, I don't know too much about it. And I don't know too much about politics. G. And I really don't know Black anything about water, Watergate. Yeah. So what would that look like today? Uh, so what was the... Who, well, are the, the who, who, who are the reporters? Um, Bernstein, somebody in Bernstein. Oh, yeah. Who are the yeah, two reporters that broke it? Robert Redford and... Well, uh, all the president's men. You're talking <laughs> about the movie. Yeah. I'm talking about the actual guys. Woodward and Bernstein. That's what it was. Woodward and Bernstein. Pretty, pretty historic stuff when you think about it, when you look back on it. But like Nate said, um, I'd be curious to see how that would play out in today's climate. It would be a disaster. It would be different. All right, moving on. What are you reading? What are you watching, guys? Um, well, what am I reading? I decided to pick up an old book that I haven't read in a while, and I'm bringing in the Stephen King Dark Tower, The Gunslinger. Okay, Ooh. really like this stuff, like adventure. Um, I read a lot of classics. I read a lot of inspirational stuff, but I also throw in a lot of classic adventure novels. I kind of, I, I, I keep that to use my um, creativity elements to, to go ahead and, and imagination, uh, to let my imagination run wild. And uh, this is a good book, man. This is um, The Dark Tower, an easy read. As I continue to work on a few novellas that I'm writing. I'm not a writer. I don't know how to write, but I enjoy it. Um, I want to tell the stories that are in my head and in my heart. I just want to put them on paper. I don't care if I'm the only one to ever see it. So when I read stories like this, it helps. So this is what I'm reading. Nate, what are you reading? I'm reading the same thing, and I'm going to be referencing this book a lot over the next however long we're doing this, but the Beer Bible, and I just wanted to read something about box very quickly. So I'll Please try do. to read something every single time we have a new beer. But it's awesome, yeah. Box. Box are German sipping beers. They are not only strong, but refined and elegant with plush maltiness that melds luxuriously with alcoholic warmth. And you know what? That's exactly what I tasted with that Andy Gator beer. So yeah. I love this book. If you guys get a chance, Jeff Allworth, Allworth, The Beer Bible, just get it. 
there's so much information like that. You get to learn so much about different kinds of beers. It's awesome. Well, half trolling says Dan Brown Inferno. That's a oh, great yeah. one. Dan Dan Brown will remake you think your life. Like he is he is he's got it, man. Um, okay, what are you watching? I'm watching another gangster series called Bad Blood. It is Kim Coates. Um, he is uh, the sidekick to the main guy in Sons of Anarchy. If you don't know, um, if, 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 the main guy. If you saw him, you'd know who he was. I forget his name in Sons of Anarchy. Um, you had Ron Perlman, who was the main guy. His main guy was Kim. Shorter Coates. guy, big beard. No. No, kind of looks like me with long hair, real grizzled looking, about 10 years older. I'm Gary. <laughs> yeah, <A little> better. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm checking it out. But what's cool about it is it talks about the Rizzuto crime family. It's three seasons. Uh, Rizzuto crime family, if you don't know, is one of the most notorious crime families in the 90s in Montreal, Quebec. And they, um, they basically – uh, took over the construction business within the city, and they enforced their will and enforced their power over people and getting bids for giant skyscrapers, which helped them, you know, and working in construction, uh, connecting all these things. And I always kind of like that. It's a little cheesy. It's a little cornier. Um, but, but uh, you know, just hanging with the story, it's still kind of interesting. That's what I'm watching. I'm watching. It's called Bad Blood. It's pretty interesting. If you get a chance, check it out. Nate, what are you watching? Uh, so I, I'm, I watched a movie recently on Netflix called Blood Red Sky. And I did this kind of as a, a, a little exercise with a couple of friends of mine um, on reviewing movies. It's a vampire movie. Um, it's a vampire movie kind of like Snakes on a Plane married together. Writing wasn't great. Acting was okay. I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. It felt kind of loose and weird to me. I don't recommend watching it, but that's why I did watch Blood Red Sky on Netflix. I give it a thumbs down. Thumbs down. Okay. Well, you got through it. You watched it. Um, don't forget, you can never fully judge anything unless you watch it or drink it all. I would what drink it all, baby. I would drink it all. <laughs> what am I listening to? I'm listening to old, great Italian classic love songs. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. Um, you may have... Uh, probably recognize a lot of stuff when you watch Casino or Goodfellas or any other mob story and stuff like that. But I actually really love this type of music. Um, I love the song Nessa Uno. Yeah, it's one of my favorite songs. Like, I feel like I just want to get up and, and, and dance. Nessa Uno is what it's called. Um, it's on there. It's just, it's all the, the great classic Italian love songs from probably the 60s um, to about the 90s. You'll hear them a lot at weddings. You'll hear them a lot at functions, and you'll hear them a lot in gangster movies. So that's what I'm listening to. Nate, what are you listening to? So um, I've been turned on to this individual. Never heard of him before. His name's Chris Stapleton. <laughs> All right. And I, I never heard the name before yesterday morning. And uh, I actually checked out his essentials on Apple iTunes, and I don't know. I, I kind of like it. A little bit bluesy, country. It's really very nice voice. Um, kind of reminds me of Nathaniel Ratliff in a, in a way. But check it out. If you like country music, almost bluegrassy kind of in a way, I liked it. Or yeah, Chris Dave, he's a he's a major award. He's, he's, oh, he's, he? Yeah, he's ma massive. Never heard of him before yesterday. He's massive. I'm not good oh. with pop culture, buddy. That's okay. You're good with beer. Cheers, my friend. Tween. Cheers. I really like this beer, by the way. Oh, we're finishing? I'm getting some fragments. Yeah, we're going to finish. I'm getting some fragments of the unfilteredness. We're going to go ahead and finish this one, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a score, and we'll see where we're ah, at. Danny, I like it. I can drink yeah. this again. Now, so just so you guys know, this beer is not going to be available all the time. Like, this was some sort of a um, – what, what do they call it? Danny, I'm, I'm searching for the word when two brewers work together. Collaboration. Collaboration. So this was a collaboration effort. I forget the name of the other brewers, but I don't think this is something that's going to be easy to find. So if you can find it anywhere you are, buy as many cans as you can and kind of tuck them away because it's not easy to find. One of the things I like about this is it is a 6.5% alcohol. So it's It'll a pop stronger – yeah. You, yeah. Beer looks good, right? And thanks, Ash. Welcome to the show. Ash, how are you? He's in London, mate. I hope you're well. I miss you. Hope you're doing good. I love Fred Buscaliano from Italy. Yes. Amazing. So one of the things that I like about 
Well, I'm just going to say this entire show. This is a great lineup, Nate. I it it. It's really a tasty lineup because you feel, different. yeah, you feel strong. Each one, like this one is, is gives you that, it's a different type of sweetness, right? This is that strawberry, hazy sweetness. It's a different feel all together. Really nice. I'm, I'm liking the way I feel buzzed a little bit. I don't feel smashed, but um, both of these beers, really nice. I'm going to go ahead and suck this down. We're going to go ahead and give it a score. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Going ahead and scoring out the moon boots. Like I said, you don't taste a lot of the hops, but you taste just enough. It's mixed in there with a great flavor from the strawberries. Most of these beers, most of these IPAs, these hazies, whatever the hell you want to call them, they're brewed with very citric flavored things. Grapefruit, lemons, mm -hmm. oranges. This one went strawberries, and they friggin' nailed it. Absolutely love it. The taste mixed in there with the hops was pleasant. It was drinkable. It was definitely desirable. I'm going to go back to it if I see it. Maybe I'll pick up a six and keep it stored away. Definitely like the taste. That's why I'm going to give it a 4.0. Oh, Murph Rod says, hello, everybody. How about a little? Yeah, there's the jazz hands. Nate, what would you give it? Yeah, I'm going to be slightly conservative on it. I'm going to do a 3.5 as well. It is a strawberry IPA, which I'm super interested in. I'd like to see some other brewers, especially with the capability to do so, to bring an effort like this to the table. 3.5 for me. I like it. It could use some refinement, but it's a really nice beer. And the fact it's a collaboration disappoints me because it's not going to be around for a long time. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Wilson says, uh, do you just go to the store and buy some random beers you've tried, or does you rely into those beer subscriptions? Both. Yeah. Yes, yes, and both, yeah. Uh, Wilson, we have an array of ways to getting beers. So sometimes we go to the store together, whether Nate's in Los Angeles or I'm in Las Vegas, and we go shopping and we buy doubles. You know, it's just, um, you know, Vegas is only 350 miles away, but sometimes the – the line is drawn somewhere at the border, so what he can get over there is a little bit different. Sometimes we do it like that. Sometimes we are part of the subscriptions. Sometimes brewers send us stuff. Sometimes people send us stuff. Um, yep. Murph Rod had gave me a six-pack of beers we're going to be trying. Other people, my cousin Brian sent me a whole box of beers. Hey, you should try these from New England. Never tried one of them. Reviewed them. So it all depends on how we get them, but we want to try every single beer in the world before we stop. And, um, yeah, so it all depends on it. Good night, everyone. Farrell, good night, my friend. When you wake up, please message me. If you would like to be on the show, we would love to have you. Absolutely love to have Barrow. Um, Ah, Trollin says, Aqua, did you like it? Um, I, I don't know. UFO doctor is, uh, some kind of thing on YouTube. You guys are still talking UFOs. Love it. Don't get picked up without picking us up. Going on to the price. Dollar ninety nine, travel man, Dan. Dollar ninety nine for a six point five. That's all I'm going to say. I'm Pretty giving good. it a four point five. Wow, four point five. Hell yeah, dude! Anytime I can get a six point five, that's two beers for one. So basically, if you look at it the way I do, you're paying ninety nine cents for a nice beer. So I'm going to do a 3.5 because I think the pr it's priced fair. But it, if it was like a dollar fifty, then I would go higher because it would be exceptional value. I think this is average value. So for me, 3.5. 3.5. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, uh, you know, dollar ninety nine, six point five, two beers strength wise. You're getting in ninety nine cents. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. The singer from Faith No More. Made. Do you know that, Danny? Made. No, I didn't Fred know songs. that. What's Fred songs? Fred Durst. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. I love Faith No More. All right, going with design. Yeah, yeah let's look at the. Yeah, let's look at the design on this guy. I'm gonna. I'm gonna single me out. Look at the design on this thing. This thing's bitching, dude. First of all, we got purple walkways everywhere. I love all these drips, right? These little dripping. You know, it looks very punk rocky, spacey. We got strawberries floating everywhere, mixed in with hops. If you take a look, you can see the hops in there. Look at a giant hop right there. Strawberries, very cool, very cool looking. And then you got three alien ladies, okay, just hanging out, whooping it up. 
I don't know what they're doing. I love the font. Um, they're hanging out. Maybe they're waiting for Travel Man Dan to come out to space, have a beer with them. Uh, you have other planets around here. Check out that planet right there. Can you see that really good? I'm sorry, my autofocus is shitty right now. Let's see it. It's some type of Saturn thing. Uh, really cool. I love the design. I love outer space. <laughs> I, I I really like this one, Nate. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's one of the coolest labels. I think if you were drinking this beer, people would always come up to you and say, what the hell are you drinking, man? Um, that, that is interesting. But I like that it's uh, got a couple of alien chicks. Um, it's an IPA. Overall, I think it's a great label. I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a 4.5. Wow, you're gonna have a pretty high score. Um, I, yeah, cool. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm kind of underwhelmed by the can. Um, Are you? Yeah, and I think they missed something here. Not, I understand that there's hops on on the can, so you got the, the hops flower and you got the strawberry, but they're not really presenting the strawberry enough to me. You know, like this purple, that's not strawberry. This pink color, that's not strawberry. The aliens, I, I, I get it, but what's alien about it? I don't really, I, I don't, I don't, it's not connecting for me. While I like the art, the artistic design of it, and I appreciate it, and I like the negative color, uh, using the, the black as a negative here, right? I think that's cool, but it's only a 3.0 for me. I, I, I think they could have done something better to make it stand out. Um, they're focusing too much on Alien and not enough I, strawberry IPA. Really? So yeah, I think what, I think with the strawberries and the and the hops dropping down, I think that really kind of like, okay. Because when people see like when you see a regular beer like a pilsner or a lager, you don't see hops. When you see hops, you know you're getting an IPA. Yeah. So that that's the conclusion I draw. But hey, that's your score. I accept it. That's that's your. If 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 they would have done instead of the black in the background, they would have done a strawberry background. And then did the black on on the the lettering and everything. I think that would have been cooler. Like okay. they, they they just didn't. It doesn't look like a strawberry beer. It looks like a regular IPA to me. And I I kind of like the font and I like that they didn't go strawberry. Like, but yeah. But hey, that's that's, fair. that's why we're reviewing and that's what makes this show great is because there's no right or wrong only, answer. Yeah, we're only two people, Nate. There's this beer could be tried by a hundred people. You're gonna get a hundred different people saying a hundred different things. Moving on to accessibility, you're not going to find this beer that much. It's only in San Francisco. It is a collaboration. Unfortunately, that's going to bring the score down. You're not even going to find it on the East Coast very much. So I'm giving this beer a 2.0 on the accessibility. Okay, so this is weird because as a brewer, if I go in there, and so I'll tell everybody what I do. I go to New York. I go to Chicago. I go to Florida. I go to Texas. I go to the Northwest and I go to LA, right? And if I can find distribution there, that means that it's surrounded by the entire country, right? So this actually has a large swath of, di of distribution. It's everywhere. But this beer in particular is not. So for a brewery, they've really extended all the way across the country. You look on Long Island, there's tons of this, uh, of this beer all over the place. You go really? to Chicago, it's everywhere. Miami, everywhere. Las Vegas, everywhere. But really? this beer in particular, I don't think you can find everywhere. So for that's a bit of a, a weird thing. Are we grading off the brewery? Are we grading off the beer? For just the beer itself, I got to go a 2.0 because it's a collaboration. I think I got lucky here in Las Vegas, and I don't think you can find it on the other side of the country. But if you look for their more year-round stuff, you can definitely find it. Interesting. I didn't know they were that prevalent around the United States. Over 150,000 barrels a year. Wow, that's a ton. All right, going with the TMD X Factor. Love the beer. Love the taste. Love the can. Love the label. Love the ladies on the can. I thought it was an overall cool thing. Love that it's in Northern California, and then I might get a chance to check it out. Uh, you know, TMD Factor, there's a lot of things going on in there. Overall, I like it, and I would do it again. I'm feeling good about the day. I'm feeling good about the beer. I'm going to go ahead and give it a score of a 4.0. Nate, what do you got? So I'm going to go 3.5 because I do like it. I, I, I think it's it's different. Um, I wish the style was a little bit better, but that's just me being picky. Um, Taste-wise, it's really interesting. You can drink this on a hot day. You can probably drink four or five of them and get away with it. Um, you know, the fact that uh, um, it's not too expensive – the distribution's nice, but again, this is a really kind of weird 
niche style beer. So it gets dinged for that, um, which it probably shouldn't. 3.5. Uh, sorry, overall, X Factor 3.5. Apologies. Nice. Okay, so my total is up. I got a score of a 19. 19. Wow. Guys. That's an amazing score. That's more than the indicator. I was shocked at that, but hey, I didn't know what it was going to be. I'm just laying down to you what I think step by step each little category, and I felt like it was good. Am I happy with the 19? Hell yeah. I thought it was a delicious beer. I definitely think you should try it. Nate, what did you give it? Yeah, not a 19. I was Whoa. a little bit less. Yeah, 15.5 overall. It definitely got, got dinged with the access at only 2.0. The price, yeah, that was fine. But 15.5, slightly below average. I'm surprised it came out at that score because I actually kind of like it better than that. But that's the score, 15.5. Okay, that, that is your score, and that's what you're going with, and, and that is okay. Hey, guys, it's time to close out the show with the quote of the week. I hope you enjoyed the beer reviews. I hope you, you enjoyed looking at those tuna eyes. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about this week in the news. But now it's time for the quote of the week, and the quote of the week is brought to us by Oren Jean. He's a young man on a mission sharing the gift of reading. Okay, you know me as sometimes reading Dan Dan. Um, he's read to hundreds of thousands of kids. He's only 10 years old, okay? But what he's got on his mind is collecting over 500,000 books and donating them, donating them to people around the world that can't afford books, people that right here in the United States that want to read more, but they just don't have access to it. Young kid on a mission. Um, he's from Texas, and he, he wants to get 500,000 books books donated by the end of this month wonder strudel just showed up yes welcome wonder strudel welcome good to have you here pumped up ready to go we are closing out the show and i want to tell you a little bit about this young man orin gene because that is the quote of the week and orin gene is only 10 years old he's from texas he's he got a donation center where you can donate books. I'll put it down in the link below if you're interested. You can send out the books. He'll figure out a way to, to do it. But um, this is um, this is nice because it brings in the whole – the future is bright. The kids got it, and they're going to do a good job. And this kid is doing wonderful things. And this quote uh, was fun. Could have chat. And don't worry, freak. I know you're at work. All good. Thanks for being a part. He said this. Oren Jean from Texas, 10-year-old boy, said – Kindness is a virtue we can all possess if we are willing to. So why not start today? Because right now is what we need more than ever, okay? And for a 10-year-old boy to understand that, man, that's so important. Maybe maybe you're saying to yourself, well, he hasn't experienced anything. Okay, but isn't that great? Isn't that the bliss of it all that he is, you know, not uh, had to go out in the world and, and basically – face confrontation that he's this young 10 year old boy that's doing such great things have you ever stopped once and actually thought about the way you thought when you were 10 years old you probably thought the same way okay it is a kindness is a virtue that we can all have and i want you to try to remember that because as we become older we become jaded we become broken we become you know just so filled with so much stupid shit and so much stuff that gets us off that original path of what we thought when we were young kids. And here's a kid who's 10 years old that is collecting over 500,000 books to give to people so that they can improve their literacy. That's amazing. At 10 years old. Now, you know, what you're saying is when he grows up, things will change. No, that's on you. That's on you. When you grew up, you changed. Okay? You forgot that kindness was a virtue. So I wanted to go ahead and bring this quote from this kid to go ahead and probably bring you guys in, reel you guys in. Whether I'm talking to you or not, I'm sorry if you're, I'm not intentionally talking to you. But we all kind of think this way, right? Start to bring kindness back into your world. Make sure it is virtue. Now, whether that's opening the door for someone and being polite or sending something that you normally wouldn't do because something inside of your own insecurity or your own ego is not allowing you to do, to tell somebody something, to reach out to somebody. So many times you see all the negativity going on on social media of all these people. So you say, you know what, I'll just fall in line and I'll do that. No, be kind to people because it is a virtue. Okay, and what we need now more than anything is just that. 
even if it's a little dose, even if it's just a little dose of it inside your small circle, that can grow because you might go ahead and be able to pass that on. I wanted to share that with you. I know the kid's only 10, but he's doing great things. And I think that's wonderful. If you can somehow um, look at your life and look back to when you were 10 years old and how you felt and be able to implement that now, I think you would be very similar to Orange Gene and the way he felt. Don't be jaded. Don't let your ego get in the way. Be kind to other people. The future is bright, all that kind of stuff. And that is the quote of the week. I hope you guys had a great show. Let's bring Nate on for one last hurrah. Nate, thank you so much. Man, it was so much. It was such a great show, fun show each and every week. But I really look forward to this one. We had an awesome time. Yeah, man. It was a nice story at the end there. You know, kindness costs nothing but means everything. So everybody has access to it. It just it would be nice if we all kind of um, pulled from that every now and again and, and weren't so mean to each other. So it's true, just man. Free, just do it and your life will be better. And it's hard. Like, I'm going to be honest, it's hard because a lot of values don't line up with your values and it's hard to be nice and kind to people. But you can do it. Every one of us can do it. It's a free thing. So it's not coming out of our paycheck. It's not coming out of our bank account. It's only coming from you. And that builds the confidence in who you are as a person. Nate, do you have anything else to say? People are bringing in lots of good comments. Wonder Strudel's here. Beautiful, says Lisa. Glad I caught the show. Glad to have you here, Wilson. Aquanuts, hello. That's deep, man. That's a great kid. He is a great kid, right? And like, He's doing things, and, and I'll put the link down below in the description if you want to check him out. So much to have, so much fun to have you here, Ginevra. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Bye, everyone. Uh, Trollin says, Bye, Ginevra. Freak, Wonder Strudel, pay it forward. Yeah, pay it forward, right? That That's the whole premise of it all. Um, Nate, always a pleasure. Always a good time having you on the show. I look forward to next week's show already where we could have a new guest. You have any last parting words? No, man. You hit it all on the head. It was a great show. Great being here. Thanks, Nate. Great to have you here. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining. I appreciate it. I wish you the best wherever you are, whatever you're doing this week. Have a good one. I'm Travel Man Dan. This is the Test Bunny. Have a good world. <laughs> Make sure you see everything. Well, let me start it over. I see you don't see these. <laughs> you don't see these kinds of things, right? This is a live a cut. I'm Travel Man Dan. This is the Test Bunny. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a great day. I wish you the very best. And remember, it's big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Bye, guys. Goodbye. All right. Let me end.